Department of Science. Hello everyone, my name is Angela Garcia Maravet from the Department of Civil Engineering of the University of Granada. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Serrano and all the organizers for inviting me to participate in this event. My presentation today is about the Index 25 Street Cleanliness in Granada, which is a city in the south of Spain. Human surfaces receive waste deposits from natural and human sources such as green urban areas and parks. Vehicular traffic, industry, domestic heating and waste receive through atmospheric transport. Local human activities can also be the origin of the street waste. This type of waste creates a negative visual impact, particularly on visitors and thus it affects the economy of the city. According to the Spanish legislation on waste and contaminated surfaces, this type of waste is considered to be household waste. Consequently, local authorities have the legal responsibility to provide a street cleaning service. Most street cleaning services are outsourced to local providers and therefore control policies are required. Quality controls are useful in order to check whether the services are being executed according to the quantity, quality and performance standards that are provided. Thus, the aim of the street cleaning quality control is to guarantee a level of cleanliness, to make sure that all the rules are followed and to establish a regional framework between the work that is done and that which is planned. Because of the tasks and costs involved in the process, street cleaning is an activity in which there are opportunities for saving by simply improving the efficiency of the process. Therefore, this work aims to improve this vital service for any city by checking the suitability of an index that gives a true reflection on the level of cleanliness that the city presents. The motivation of this work is to address issues that are considered important, such as the quality and governance of public services, the disparities between the budget spent and the resulting quality of service, and the efficiency in management of public entities. This will contribute to the proper management of public expenditure and improve the quality and cost of an essential service for any municipality. The experimental setup used to evaluate the level of dirtiness of Granada has included the following stages. Evaluation of the level of dirtiness of the streets, description of the study area and design of the sample to determine the reliability of the results obtained, and a statistical analysis of data. The index defined by the Spanish Federation of Municipalities and Provinces is the only method including a numerical index for the evaluation of the quality of the different street cleaning services. So based on it, a cleanliness index has been defined in this study to classify the level of dirtiness on the street according to four intervals detailed in the table. The index varies in proportion to the amount of litter on the street and it is related to the type of pavement, climate conditions and mode of vehicle parking and it is defined by the equation. The observation area included a whole section of road or sidewalk on only one side of both sides of the road where the cleanliness level was going to be measured. The length of the observation area varied, depending on the equivalent width. In any case, the observation area was between 300 and 500 square meters. The equivalent width depended on two factors. The real width of the sidewalk and the parking lot, according to the table. The cleanliness level depends on both the climatic conditions and the characteristics of the road or sidewalk considered in evaluation. So two correction factors were included in the determination. To quantify the amount of litter in the observation area, it was necessary to count the litter fractions included in the table. Finally, the quantity of litter of each type was multiplied by a weighting coefficient but depending on the litter classification. Another method frequently used to measure the quality of the service is by analyzing the degree of satisfaction of the population. 
In order to compare the level of cleanliness obtained by the index, the opinions of citizens passing in the street at the time of data collection were considered. People were asked their opinion on the level of cleanliness of the streets and they were given four possible answers according to the classification used. These values were transformed into quantitative intervals. The city of Granada is located in the region of Andalusia in southern Spain and it is divided into eight districts that have different characteristics of types of road, social class and age of the resident population, which differentiates their main activities. Inaga is the company responsible for the street cleaning services in Granada. It establishes the frequency of the sweeping services and distributes the staff and machinery. The following methods are used to keep the environment clean and free of litter. Manual individual sweeping, mechanical sweeping, manual and mechanical water flow, and other special services such as graffiti removal. The size of the population sample is one of the most important aspects of this type of research study because it determines the reliability of the results obtained. Considering the number of streets included in each district, as well as the average population of each, the optimal sample size was calculated to comprise the minimum number of streets and the minimum number of people interviewed. This research study aims to analyze the state of the cleanliness of the city according to the two methods previously described. The results were then analyzed with the software application SPSS. Each data set was analyzed with the following statistical descriptors number of cases, average, median, standard deviation, range width, minimum, maximum, and percentile. The relation between the index and citizens' opinion was analyzed by Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. This allows us to identify how the two variables are interrelated. After performing data collection, an image of the level of cleanliness of the city was created. Regarding the cleanliness index of the city, the average level was 61.60, which is classified as a very high level of cleanliness. In the case of the citizens' opinions, the average value was 3.17, corresponding to a high level of cleanliness. In general, all the districts obtained a positive cleanliness index, although there were some districts which were found to have a higher level of cleanliness. This was the case of the three districts highlighted in the table. On the other hand, five districts received a bad evaluation from the citizens. Comparing the results obtained from the two methods described to quantify the cleanliness of the city of Granada, it can be observed that in the case of the citizens' opinion, the general results were slightly lower than those obtained for the index. The influence of the different types of waste of the cleanliness index was also analyzed. It can be observed how city residues clearly affect the index with a 60% influence on the final result. We also have to take into account that the weight coefficient is 2, in addition to the requirement of the special cleaning services necessary to clean this kind of waste. The influence of the sticky residue was followed by that of the leaves from trees, parks and bushes with an influence of 11% on the cleanliness index as they were spread around the city. Small litter, both organic and inorganic, also have a special importance. The remaining types of waste have a lower or no effect on the index. The relationship between the frequency of the sweeping services and the results obtained from the two methods analyzed was also studied to analyze the distribution of resources of the street sweeping service. The frequency of this service is determined by the company responsible for the cleaning service of the city, according to the type of street and its location. Furthermore, the cleaning services have established a system to give priorities to those streets where many people walk every day or are more crowded, or to those streets that are dirtier and need to be cleaned more often. In the case of streets included in this study, the following sweeping frequency has been detected. 
one, two, three, four, five or six days per week. From this video, it is possible to conclude that the resources are not optimally distributed. This part could be improved by changing the timetables of the workers so that they can see more frequently those streets where the cleaning services are clearly inefficient and that are not clean with the desired frequency in order to improve the final results. Once the results obtained from both methods applied in this research have been studied, we focus on the relationships that may exist between them. Generally, cleaning levels were higher with the use of being less. The analysis also focused on the statistical relationship between both systems using linear correlation coefficients. The general correlation coefficient obtained was 0.74, which is an acceptable result allowing us to establish a linear correlation between our two methods. A correlation, of course, should be linear or must be linear, otherwise it will not be useful to disprove that the index fits the situation of the districts of Granada. In addition to this, the dispersion graph shows a linear chain of the compiled data. Finally, it is possible to conclude that in relation to the cleaning level of Granada, the cleanliness of Granada is good and that the results obtained from the cleanliness index and citizen opinion correspond to the category of very clean or clean. The cleaning levels vary from one place to another because of the specific features of each district. However, there are some disagreements between the results obtained from the index and the citizen's opinion. A sticky residue has a negative influence and this is because there is much uh, sticky residues on the street and also because it is particularly difficult to clean. In relation to the management of the sweeping service, results obtained from our two methods have been positive. They have been obtained by analyzing ideas on implementing changes that could, could improve the results of cleaning some streets simply by relocating some of the workers to other areas. And finally, in relation to the suitability of the cleanliness index, Pearson's coefficient uh, show a correlation of 0.74 at the mineral level, which shows that the index has an acceptable suitability. The majority of districts show good results in the specific study conducting in each area. And a tool has been found that it, it is very easy to use by any technician of the town council, which allows us to measure the level of cleanliness of the streets of a city, so that the outsourced company is not responsible for controlling all of the cleaning services. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending the afternoon session. I apologize to all the speakers and the audience for the late start of this uh, session, uh, partly due to the very nice lunch that was offered to us. Um, and uh, now, of course, uh, we will have to be prompt with our talks. So may I ask the next speaker, uh, Pedro Fernandez, um, I believe all the speakers have already uploaded their talks. So, Pedro Fernandez is from the Universidade Politécnica de Madrid, and he's going to be talking to us oh, sorry. on um, an observatory on sustainability in Spain. I'll be brief with the introductions in order to save time. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you very much. Grazie. Buonasera. Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, for the people that arrived uh, earlier, you, you have a good uh, gift. You learn a little bit of Spanish. 
Then uh, I I thank you for well, two things for stay here in time and to let me introduce a little bit to my language. Thank you very much. Um, al inicio. Um, well, uh, Ravena or the organizer asked me to talk about uh, the Observatory on Sustainability in Spain. Uh, um, I'm coming from the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid and also I'm, I'm the owner of a Coastal Planning Group. And uh, we are working in uh, related with this subject uh, uh, for, for years ago. And we are very interested in all these kind of index or, or parameters or, well, in fact, we are really in, interested in life in, in, in many sense. Well, then when, uh, when uh, Professor uh, Bruzzi uh, asked me to talk about uh, this subject. First, uh, things so, well, was a uh, tough subject because it's a lot of information. Many people are working about this. Uh, what what new can can I say about this? In well, and, uh, uh, instant, uh, um, not, I don't want. I didn't want to go to the to the report. Well, when I uh, suddenly I released that, what uh, something uh, happened? Sorry. Something happening in, in this time. The, the Observatory on Sustainability in Spain was closed. And uh, the question was uh, thinking about, come on, and, go, and uh, uh, talking about sustainability, about the Observatory on, on Sustainability in Spain for some institution that has not been sustainable. Mm, come on, uh, I don't think I, I will get many credits from the audience, no? But this is a. Uh, Good things. I think that in bad things you always get good things. And the good thing is uh, it gives us the opportunity to put out of the report, to put out of the index, and to take a view wider, outside, a little bit outside of the, all the data. And this is the, the way I, I try to interpret, I try to, to present you this day, observatory of sustainability. And this clause gives us the opportunity to talk about sustainability and the indicators and crisis and life and oh, my group, Coastal Planning, your group also. Well, um, well, I know, I, I know myself a little bit and I like to talk, uh, could be for many, many subjects. And this, uh, this I, I, I try to make an index just to fix in the, in the focus on the subject. Um, the first question, what is uh, in this small index? Because I want to transmit only a few, few ideas. The observatory was not sustainable. What, what can be? If uh, I said before, uh, uh, observatory has to be an example for the whole country, has been not sustainable. Why? What has what's happened? Not only in the observatory, but it's, uh, it's a pity, but what is what's, what's happening in, in the country? And for uh, we are not so different from the rest of the Europe, and we are not so different from the rest of the world. What is happening in the world? We are a good example to study, like anthropologists, uh, not study uh, the whole the whole data, study a small a small piece, but to understand the rest or to have some ideas. Then uh, we will go back to the origin of indicators or the idea of indicators to. To say to to think a little bit about what is the meaning or what what, what we are working what we understand about indicators. Uh, coming back, uh, like uh, Professor Bruce asked me, uh, well, focus on the Spanish Sustainability Observatory. What is the gaps? What is the the, the mistake or not mistake? But the, what's uh, what's what's wrong with this uh, uh, Spanish Sustainability Observatory? Some conclusions. I recommend two reports. And uh, some acknowledgement to, to finish this this era, this afternoon, this presentation. Well, uh, I like I said before, uh, the observatory was not sustainable uh, last June 2013. Just right now, the Spanish Sustainable Observatory was closed by the Spanish government. And wh why why it was closed? And the, the the idea they transmit to the to everybody is like uh, closing uh, another observatory or another. Uh, um, public service is uh, the austerity rules that is uh, governing the idea of uh, our government. I will not go if it is okay or not, but the thing is the, to move out the country, the idea is from today's economic crisis started at least 2008, but this is very important uh, because when, uh, well, I think the crisis started much 
much before than 2008, but this could be uh, addresses at 2008. The thing is, uh, the, the observatory start more or less on that time. Uh, come on, you, you have a lot of people, very clever people, a uh, very research institution on the right moment, and you didn't arrive on the, on the task that you, you, you have to. You have to, because everybody's... Uh, well, this is the, the idea, no? Uh, then, uh, just thinking uh, log logically, that this could be not the best way of think, but uh, to follow. Uh, it seems strange, at least curious, that an official organist called sustainability has, the life has been only seven years. But I want to point out that it's the, has the, the observatory, and not against the observatory, and the state of the, the genetic worthy reports and value information based in clear methodology supported by the list of indicators. It's a very good, very good job. But the uh, whole picture is uh, no success. Indicators validate for, for specialists and researchers communities in a wide spectrum of fields. That this is a good job that has been done for the, for the observatory. No, I don't want that to the audience misunderstand me. Uh, but my my view is a key point to survive. Is the point is the the observatory has to survive in crisis time, or to be sustainable. Also, it's not. It's, it's one of the 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 the, the colors that has to to. Uh, this event of, of foil gives us the opportunity to make some consideration that I said before. Um, just uh, going conceptually to the methodology, it's true that the measure of accurate result from activity to the previous planning, how close we are to the, to the task that we have uh, fixed before, is uh, in different activities, uh, how I write to, to these targets. Oh, this methodology is many times objectives, but uh, look at objectives. It's, it seems objective, but mm, behind the, the, this uh, methodology, uh, subjective so are, are a um, very important way. In, in some sense, uh, well, we arrive to the, to the indicators. An indicator is like an iceberg. We see only the, the top of the iceberg, but behind the, the, the indicator is a big mass of, of ice. I think it's a good... And uh, also to how do we think about this, this size, this mass of size, is not Objective. It's related with uh, our way of thinking and, and where we are looking for in the future. What is the development that we are thinking? Um, unfortunately, other times these indicators are only apparently the objectives. At the final evaluation of a project or a policy the indicators will help a lot, not only to measure the real results related to previous defined targets, but also to verify or discard hypotheses and processes and to adjust and change our targets to other more possible elitist one. Well, I write to the indicators. This methodology is not new. Uh, if, uh, for taking some example, the European Commission, one of the, uh, for example, 2007, measuring progress towards a more sustainable Europe 2007, monitoring report of the European Union Sustainable Development, with a big um, base on statistics. That has a lot of danger. There's a Eurostat. It's a very good thing, but has a lot of danger. It's something not new. Uh, looking closer at the environmental project, restart related with wildfire or even prediction of quality of life, the concept is a concept of footprint that has another aware or, or, or danger of footprint, has another cultural aspect or, or, or ideology behind it. A lot of process, not only those with a clear environmental intention, look for a reduction of the foot, the, the footprint of the process, understanding this footprint as environmental and social impact over an ecosystem or community. These icons that I bring to you come from the Spanish observatory. That is common in other, but even it is easier to use, simplify to to mass. It could be one of it's good thing for one way, because one this uh, nice faces, green face, yellow face, red face, like a uh, light, uh, light uh, uh, simplify m many things in the in the results, but it could be too too simple. In the same way, indicators usually are a quantification of the increase or decrease of the consumption of goods, energy, or the affection of the sun selected members on an ecosystem, the accelerated rate to sun commodities for the population affected by the action in process to risk of social exclusion, among many others. 
This quantification in different kind of units or the number of individuals affected in process clearly helps a lot on, on, in the task of identification of the most sustainable way to follow the preserve of biodiversity and to maintain a healthy society in a better world. The but I'm convinced that the good labor, like I said before, developed from the observatory all this year and also the convince of the necessity of institutions like this. But I admit that it was not perfect, the idea of indicator, and it is necessary to affect it closer. It was close. Uh, this, what is the gaps of this type of methodology? The methodology of an indicator is not perfect. We would like to have a fixed thing or to have a security. We are looking for security in our life, in our work, in many things. And indicators became something that gives us security. Uh, if the indicators say that, uh, it's fixed, but it's not. The indicators make reference to an ideal system adopted as good. And it is clear that the definition of this system needs many compromises. We went policies, we went with type of development we are thinking. Uh, we are very familiar that with what we have been seen before that many indicators give different results, different uh, interpretation. It depends on what you are looking for. The systems can be good under the cultural or social view, but not under the other. It can be good today, but not tomorrow. And today and tomorrow is this, well, I think it always is running very fast. Or simply good in some contexts and not in another. Uh, in, even if we admit that the system is good, indicators cannot cool behavior in different aspects, not described in its system. Especially in the use of many, or, or the behavior of the, not only the, 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 the people, or the behavior of different communities, uh, the behavior uh, is, for example, if I use more uh, my glasses uh, uh, and someone is t taking notes how times I'm using my glasses, could, uh, could uh, reach uh, how good is my view. But maybe I didn't use my glasses because I don't want to have my glasses on. This is my behavior, what is ruling the, the attitude. But someone is taking notes how this uh, uh, Professor Pedro Fernandez is taking the half of the time the, the, the glasses. It's not bad, his, his view, but I can't see any of you. Uh, the thing is, um, behavior is very important in interpretation. Even the, another thing is that we have a lot of confidence in the big agencies that manage a lot of, a lot of the data, extraordinary power to manage an incredible amount of data. But the vision of the VR world is still not perfect. We have to be very happy with, with, with a nice map of the world, what is happening. Well, the thing is to, to be at the, one of the last of the presentations. Uh, some way you can take some, some, some idea from the, what you're seeing. No? But is this map, not, not to criticize no, anyone, the big data of the world with what is happening with the, anyway, with any criteria. What is summarized so, so, so many things in a, in a small map, that's a map of the, has to say anything. Um, to point out an extreme example is uh, if we may survey to the, I'm very focused to the person, to the people, from community biology from Netherlands to say something cannot be applied to a community of native flora expert from El Chaco in Paraguay. And I close this, these two examples because now I'm working with some colleagues from Netherlands and I will be on, on, in community to, from Paraguay. The, we start a course in, 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 in the weeks. And, uh, well, it's, it's not work. The thing that doesn't work in, in Netherlands for many reasons. That, uh, the, same, the same indicators in Paraguay. We, we, we have, if we take another example around the world, it's the same. We tend to be extremely confident in the science method, but it needs help from social and cultural knowledge. Man. It's uh, something that we forgot many, many times. How you have, I think the society has trust too much in science. Uh, following with the gaps in Spanish sustainability territory, uh, the good result of indicators of a process, for example, the decrease of energy consumed, but it's mainly we are looking for less consume, less water, using less water, but could be using more water could be better because we are, uh, we are stopping the water flow down to the, uh, in, order, uh, in the system. I know that is, for example, this idea is a crazy idea for the management of water or the less consume, but that thinks about that, a downstream, what is happening because you are using less water and so you are maintaining the water upstream. It could be very good not to flux too much, for sure, in general terms, to, not to flux too much, but it could be the downstream need, need that water to flux. 
Anyway, that's that's the idea. Uh, some, con some context is not not always the thing that you see is that the indicator is looking at, at telling. For example, taking an example of our uh, ruler this afternoon uh, was hitting. Uh, when you 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 arrive to 39 degrees, uh, for sure you are you are you feel feel bad. Maybe not. yes or not because it's a it could be a, a expression of the body that you are, the body is working well, getting you to a good health. But for sure I will I will call the, the doctor. But this not, doesn't mean this a bad indicator. Mm? Uh, just for so yes, apologize, yes. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> Um, uh, or another thing is maybe the process itself in a weather view is not adequate even not necessary or, or clearly not sustainable I was just for to take a little bit from each presentation uh, from my friend from Cadiz that is wonderful no? but, uh, but I was thinking take the things up of the CO2 I think I, I don't know you understand I put down on the, on the floor of the sea and you are basis in indicator to say to everybody that will not happen anything. Four minutes is enough for me. Um, and the thing is, okay, the same thing say the people that are living in the coast of Japan. The indicators say that never a wave will arrive to destroy this coast. When we put something, and the study, I don't criticize the study, but I'm thinking about the concept, when we put something down in the, in the sea, I really want to say that my heart don't feel good. Because it's based in an indicator and based in a, in, in a development that sooner or later we'll, we have to pay. We have to pay for that. Anyway, the, could be the process is good, the indicator is good, but the risk, I think, is not tolerable. The process is not tolerable. Maybe the process itself in a weather view is not adequate, even not necessary or clear, not sustainable. The indicator could say us, okay, you are making a good job, but the, 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 the good thing is that, please, don't do that job. What can I say about the Station Spanish Observatory and what lesson can we learn from this event? Uh, was, when I, I was in, uh, thinking about this, uh, wow, what's, what do people know about the people around me, my community, know about the indicators or know about the, the results of the common people like me, uh, about the result of the observatory, not much. I know because I'm working with that, as, but what is the, I don't know, the, uh, the owner or, or if, well, the people around me has no, no much idea what is happening. Another thing is, um, um, I, I, I escaped, this one is, the, the one idea this is going on with sustainability that I, I think I mentioned before is uh, we we trying to maintain everything because we I think we love stability but it's the the system is not stable the system is changing the changing is good good thing we must know how to establish and and the, the idea is to to adapt more than to to be well, sustainable in another way that is transmitting many 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 process has to be sustainable. Well, in some way, there is a lack of connection between the reality of the communal process we live and the relation and the reports that we have been done. I don't want to say that there has not been economical studies, but if I ask, well, I, you for sure you know, but if I ask another people, what is the relation and indicator and how this indicator affect economically, tell me in euros how this uh, 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 indicator uh, affect you in your, in your life, daily life, no idea, no idea, no idea, no, no. But this has to be, it's a word that I think has to be done. One minute. The other question is related with the turn itself. Well, I will escape this one. Well, the idea is uh, indication related with economy. Uh, I'm a member of the community need to clearly understand that following sustainability criteria, it is not only good in environmental terms, that for, for sure I love to, that has to be environmental, but also contribute to welfare and richness in the white sand, and it can be and has to be measured in euros. We have to know how cost each indicator to the society and what. Uh, it's not for, for make a report like a machine, make a report and maintains, uh, which, well, maintain groups working in indicators. No, 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 no. It has to give something really, really value, really worthy to all of us. Is the, is, the, is the objective. 
There is no assisting translation for indicator result to errors that common citizens can easily understand. Was was one of the key weaknesses of the Spanish Observatory. If for sure the government noticed that maintain this is uh, is is worthy, is it could it could be not uh, close. Just one minute, please. Let me one minute. A clear measure in euros terms and what the space of the report is all of the Spanish society. I think it could be enough to support the observatory. Um, well, the close of the observatory is reflected in some aspect from the, what is happening with the sustainability memories that many organizations, and private firms and companies are producing every year. It has, if you look for, for sustainability, every company has its, its own uh, report about sustainability. But I think it's not going in, it is going in, in sustainability, but it's going in to maintain the activity and to say to the, to the society, we are green. By, by, by us. By us because we are green. And it's not the, it's not the point. Well, conclusion. The use of indicators by the Spanish Observatory of Sustainability has been, and I like to think, a success to understand one process but needs to get influenced to change and, and criticize activities. It has failed on the wide spread of the result to the citizen to add value in euros to these results and has transmitted one conference about sustainability. A sample like Ravenna 2013 and previous one, 2011, 2010, I, I came and uh, I'm very uh, thankful to Ravena and to Professor uh, Brucey to invite me to come here. It's a very good example on how to translate or share this result. Another, another way is the uh, new technology. In this case, our group, LinkedIn Coastal Planning Group, is a very good example. It started in 2011, <coughs> and it is now 2000, 2000, more than 2,000 experts from everywhere in the world related with Coastal related with ocean, but related with environmental, and was a success to spread all the all this kind of thing of of, uh, of view and and share. I invite you to go to LinkedIn, and uh, you are invited to to participate in our coastal planning. It's a real real revolution along the world. It's people from everywhere, from Alaska to uh, Magallanes in South America, to to Malaysia, to Indonesia, to China. Africa, everywhere. I'm finished. There had been a small room to different interpretation. There were no dynamic modifications of the criteria. Well, this is blah, blah, blah. The economic aspect did not reach to what the people understand or not improve their day-to-day -day activities. That we don't forget, we are a person. We, we need to touch everyone and to, to feel the, the reports, not something that is in the, in the air very nice. <laughs> The Observatory and the Policy about Sustainability and the Spanish Government has contributed to generate a family of reports by many institutions and companies, as I said before. But I'm really, really finished. I am sure that new Observatory of Sustainable to a slide or similar institution will be established in new future in Spain. If something happens, you fall and go up. Fall and go up. Don't worry. It's, well, Spain, Spain has been down many times, going up and will down again. Uh, and I think it's a very good idea, Observatory of Sustainability, and in the future I'm sure that will be uh, another observatory, like this crisis will pass. I uh, really recommend this one, and the, this, uh, this report of uh, 2012, Spanish Observatory. Please go to the web and download it, because it's a very good report. Acknowledgement. Okay, Ravenna, for sure, uh, organizer, team members, and Ravenna City. I feel so good when I, when, uh, Luigi called me, and for sure, Professor uh, Brucey called me, and uh, I'm waiting, come on. He will call me another year? Come on, yes, he called me. Okay. <laughs> I will come back to Ravenna, because I feel very good here. And I enjoy this atmosphere, this nice city, looking the cycle, the interest of the environmental, how you live, the food, uh, everything. And then I feel happy to come here. I'm very, thank you very much for Ravenna, the team member, of course, in, in person, Giovanni Montessori and Luigi Brucci. Coastal Planning Link Group, that is, was all the people around the world that has, I'm learning so much of these people. I rule this, this, this group. I'm so happy with this group. This, that this is a, a real success. Uh, and this is very important. It's the last, but a small baby turtle called Greta. Greta, I was uh, also... Just, just, just me. Already ten minutes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we arrive late also, and this is very important. And this is very important, very, very important. I am so professor on uh, El Salvador and uh, uh, with uh, Salesianos in Salvador of wave energy. 
the last year uh, was an uh, finish the course I will this is a very technical course and there was an activity to release a small turtle okay then I decided to finish the courses uh, just go to the student to the beach of San Diego in El Salvador and release the turtle you cannot imagine this small gesture change the thing of you of this technical about the sea and about the nature then small things contribute too much to do good things about the about the nature about the the, the behavior of every one of us then i call as my small my small uh, my small turtle greta and i would like to think that it's going around on oceans on the world and when i see the i will look into the ocean and thinking about my greta and i, I say i have to take care about the ocean because if not my, my little greta will not grow up happily then thank you very much all of you to stay here muchas gracias a la clase de español as i know that we we have make a very good link uh por favor estudie en español thank you very much and apologize but <laughs> thank you thank you pedro um i'm going to ask the next speaker please simona verita if you could uh, Thank you, Simona. And please, can I ask people to keep to the 20 minutes allocated? Even though we'd like to hear about Greta, it's uh, rude for the next speaker. So, Simona is going to talk us about, to, to us about the observatory in San Marino, yes. which I hope has not been closed. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Simona and I'm a consultant on energy and the environment and I'm involved in this project that has been created by the coordination group Agenda 21 with the aim of mapping the current state of sustainability in San Marino and to make a comparison with Italy and other European nations. The basic information on territory are necessary to develop future scenario and to define strategy and to support political decision on sustainability. San Marino is the third smallest country in Europe, bigger than Vatican City and Monaco only. Its dimension is about 61 square kilometers and uh, it uh, can be classified as a microstate. The microstate have uh, the dimension of a small uh, uh, city, but have all uh, the administrative, political, uh, institutional, and diplomatic function of a state. The territory is uh, divided in uh, agricultural surface that count for uh, 47%, and. Uh, in the recent years, uh, the build-up area and the road account for 14%, the wood areas count for uh, 15%, and the badlands for 18%. Uh, the people with uh, San Marino nationalities that live in the territory are nearly to 30,000 and the population density is about uh, 500 inhabitants per square kilometers. In 2008, San Marino uh, became a World Heritage Site for the UNESCO. The main function of the Observatory of, uh, on Sustainability is to give uh, uh, support to the local institution to create a sustainable development model and to publish relevant data on the progress achieved. The objective of the observatory is to measure and to record uh, in some important indicators over the time and space in order to foresee the trends. Our first purpose is to find the proper indicators to characterize the San Marino territory and this is a fundamental step uh, to define the development strategy and to direct the political choices. Um, San Marino for us is a good uh, case study because uh, have a diversified reality from a political, social and economic point of view 
and these small dimensions are suitable to create uh, an innovative tool for sustainability that could be a pilot for, uh, uh, to be adapted by larger and more complex communities. And now we can see some indicators that we have uh, studied for uh, San Marino. We have, uh, there are uh, some main indicators on social sustainability, such as the Human Development Index, and then uh, we have studied some environmental sustainability index, such as the CO2 emissions, the air pollution, the water quality, the waste production, and so on. And some indicators of economic sustainability that are the gross domestic uh, uh, product. As concern as energy consumption, the primary energy uh, consumption for San Marino was about uh, 155 kilotoy in 2008. And uh, the primary energy consumption are characterized by a strong uh, component of oil and natural gas uh, that are totally imported by Italy, from Italy and uh, by the absence of nuclear and renewable sources. In the second figure, we can see the primary energy consumption pro capite, per capita, and uh, we can see that San Marino is characterized by high val val uh, value, uh, and uh, this is due to, um, uh, to the fact that the standard of living in San Marino is more wealthy than the other country. As concerns electricity consumption, uh, San Marino is in the range of uh, 270,000 gig 70 gigawatt hour for year, and the, dem the demand is in continuous growth uh, with uh, a 6% average uh, uh, annual growth rate. In uh, the last uh, three years, the annual growth rate was lower to the effect of uh, the global economic crisis that affect the productive uh, sector. In the second figure, we see the comparison uh, from uh, electricity consumption per capita of San Marino and uh, Italy, Emilia-Romagna region and the province of uh, Rimini. San Marino put uh, into the atmosphere uh, nearly 350,000 tons of CO2 per year and uh, in the graph we can see the trend of the last uh, eight uh, years. Uh, there is also the comparison between the CO2 uh, production per capita and the value for San Marino is about 11.5 tons of CO2 equivalent per inhabitant and this is strictly related to the energy consumption of the state that is higher than in Italy and Emilia-Romagna and Rimini. As concerns waste, the urban waste production is a significant indicator of the interaction between the human activities and the environmental system, and it highlights a link with the social economic condition of the territory. Higher volume of good produced means higher quantity of waste that to be managed uh, through recycling or disposal. Uh, San Marino in 2010 produced about 20,000 tons of waste, of urban waste, and this value is increasing over all the period of analysis. In 2010, more than 4,000 tons of waste have been collected by a diversified collection that represents the 21% of the total waste production. This value is lower than uh, the value that characterizes Italy, that is about uh, 50%. The solid waste production per capita is nearly to 630 kg per inhabitant and uh, in the graph we can see that this value is lower than, uh, for example, the province of Rimini. Uh, we have to notice that the value of Rimini is strongly affected by the touristic flow. In several provinces of Emilia-Romagna, with the tourism, the number of presence was up 10 times higher than the number of inhabitants. 
so we can try to check if uh, in San Marino there is a, a connection between the tourist pre presence and the urban waste production. So in the graph, we are, in the second graph, we have reported the uh, number of uh, inhabitant equivalent and uh, uh, the waste production uh, per month. Uh, as we can see that uh, there isn't a correlation because uh, in the summer uh, months uh, in July, August and September the production of, of waste is lower and the tourism flow is in, in, in its peaks. So there is a correlation. San Marino uh, didn't have an uh, internal source of water, so all the water is, important, is in, imports from uh, Italy, in particular from Ridracoli Dam, from Hera and from Marecchia River. The water consumption in 2012 has been higher than 3.6 million of cubic meters, with a small decrease uh, respect to the previous year. And for a comparison purpose, in the second graph, we reported also the uh, consumption in terms of liter per inhabitant per day of San Marino and, for example, for Serbia. Uh, and we can see that the value of San Marino is uh, lower because, uh, per ex for example, in Serbia, the tourism is very high in, uh, in summer. The air quality is uh, monitored by the health department and uh, the high pollutants monitored are uh, particular matter, ozone concentration, mono carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide. And uh, there is a, a fixed monitoring station and uh, as we can see in the graph, uh, the concentration, for example, of uh, particular matter is lower uh, than uh, the limit of uh, law. All the data of, uh, the quality, uh, of air quality are reported in the website uh, of the Health Department of San Marino. As concern uh, the social sustainability, we can try to uh, calculate the value of the Human Development Index for San Marino and uh, uh, the Human Development Index is an indicator that clearly expresses uh, the development uh, reached by a society through uh, some relevant aspects that are uh, a long adult life, uh, the instruction level and the gross uh, domestic product pro capita. Uh, the value that we have calculated for San Marino is very high and uh, is about uh, 0 0.97 and this value put uh, San Marino in the first position in the world uh, rank. Uh, this due to the fact that uh, the gross domestic uh, product pro capita is very high and uh, there is uh, some public uh, uh, economic support to the extraction. As concerns the gross domestic product, we can see that in the last three years the trend uh, is downward. In order to have a comparison with other nations, we have calculated the gross domestic product per capita and the value is uh, very high. Um, and, uh, and we have to notice that uh, in the top position there are countries that have uh, uh, low population value and the low global importance like Luxembourg, Liechtenstein and other countries. In this year also we can uh, try to uh, study some tourism indicators because uh, San Marino have a strong uh, touristic vocation for history, origin and tradition but, but this sector is not well uh, developed more than 2 million of tourists visit San Marino the last year, but only the 3% stay uh, there for one night or more. So uh, in the other small European countries, the situation is completely different uh, and the values are in the range of 25% for Monaco and Andorra, for example. So at the, at the end, we can see that the tourists see San Marino as an attraction for a daily excursion and not for a primary destination. 
In fact, in the first graph we can see the arrivals uh, during uh, the year and we can see that the peak is during the summer uh, season because uh, some people who stay in Rimini uh, during the day go to visit San Marino. In conclusion, the prime preliminary analysis on San Marino territory has demonstrated the possibility to identify some important indicators and uh, the first data calculated for San Marino shows that the small state is a good position if compared with the other territories. This kind of analysis, especially if it is conducted for large communities, presents a high degree of difficulty due to the limited access to reliable statistical data. And the result obtained uh, could be uh, used to calculate the well-being indicator set, uh, proposed uh, by ISTAT. And uh, uh, Professor Brucey speak uh, in the morning of this uh, fact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simona, for a very interesting presentation, and I'm looking forward to visiting San Marino after seeing that. It sounds lovely. Um, may we have the next speaker? The next speaker is Alessandra Bonoli from the not very far away, Università de Bologna, and uh, Alessandra is going to talk to us about resource depletion and recycling and indicators and indices of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, okay. Um, I would like uh, to, to give you with my presentation uh, just an overview related with uh, uh, natural resources depletion issue and uh, the, the answer that uh, recycling can give uh, in order to improve uh, the sustainability in natural resource utilization. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, in uh, 1987, the World Commission on Environmental and Development gave us uh, the idea that, uh, um, that it will be impossible to uh, to have a growth in economy or a good development uh, without considering that uh, uh, natural resources are limited. Uh, you know the Brundtland report, our common future, that uh, it marked uh, the beginning of modern environmental policy. Many of natural resources, you know, are limited and will therefore one day be exhausted if we continue to use them at the current rates. In the same years, also an economist, I like to, to give you that suggestion, uh, wrote that just an economist can think that it's possible to have an infinite growth of using finite resources, but not a scientist, not an engineer. Uh, and the main assumption is that natural resources are limited. It's impossible to think to a system with an infinite growth and the term sustainable growth, sustainable development too, can be as an oxymoron. The improvement of the life conditions must be achieved without increasing consumption. The answer related just with the natural resources depletion, that is our topic, my topic this afternoon, is that um, we have to use just renewable raw material and energy sources and uh, we have to minimize, minimize uh, waste production. And how that's possible? Thanks to reuse and recycling. We have to change our mind and uh, to, to consider a perfect laws system where we have uh, in input, of course, all resources, water, raw material, energy, we have an effect, a product, for instance, uh, thanks to 
any anthropic activity, that anthropic activity can, could be uh, industri industry or uh, our life, for instance, and uh, uh, as output of any anthropic activity, we have to consider emissions, uh, waste, uh, wastewater, and so on. But uh, we have an answer if we are able to stop emissions, to stop the output, uh, and uh, we are able to recycle every emissions, every waste, uh, solid waste, wastewater, and so on. Thanks to recycling, the second uh, good effect is that uh, we can uh, reduce uh, input in resources. Thanks to recycling, we can uh, uh, reduce uh, how we need uh, as raw material, water, energy, and so on for our anthropic activities. So, related to natural resources depletion, we can uh, define many kind of several kind several indicators, and the indicators calculate the depletion of natural resources, take, taking into account two kind of approaches: an economical approach and a quantitative approach. The first one can be defined as a percentage of total gross national income. And uh, the quantitative approach, the size of the resource or reserve in ground and the consumption rate. Then we can uh, match uh, the two approaches together and we can define a new indicator as a fraction of reserve disappearing per year. Indeed, the consumption rate is expressed as a quantity, a quantity per year and uh, uh, give to that definition also an economic uh, um, approach once again. The definition uh, by World Bank uh, related with natural resources uh, depletion is uh, natural resources depletion is the sum of net forest depletion, energy depletion, mineral depletion. Forest depletion is a very, very uh, strong issue. This morning, um, Maria Betti said that uh, forest depletion is uh, uh, an important indicator related with, for instance, deforestation or for uh, quality of air, for instance. And forest depletion is uh, one of the three indicators uh, proposed by World Bank for uh, natural resources depletion uh, definition. Uh, first depletion is unit resource rents time the excess of run wood harvest over natural growth and then uh, we can define also how World Bank uh, define energy depletion and mineral uh, depletion for instance uh, that one um, is defined as is the ratio of the value of the stock of mineral resources to remaining reserve lifetime capped at 25 years it covers uh, tin, gold, lead, zinc, iron, copper, nickel, and some, some minerals, and phosphate. Phosphate uh, is a, um, it will be the uh, a challenge for the future because uh, a very strong depletion and its importance in agriculture in the world. Uh, the first one, International Human Development Indicators, uh, this morning we have seen uh, other aspects uh, in relation with natural resource depletion as percentage of uh, the total gross national income um, defined by UNDP based on the World Bank uh, data, some uh, example of uh, uh, GNI in, uh, in the world. Um, considering a, um, a, um, an LCA approach uh, in order to define uh, um, uh, resources depletion, um, we can, uh, I, I would like to suggest you the approach by Bureau Veritas by EIME 
uh, a quantitative approach calculates the depletion of natural resources taking into account the size of the resources of the resource reserving ground and the consumption rate of today's economy. That definition match put together a physical and economic point of view. Natural resource depletion indicator is expressed in the fraction of the reserve disappearing per year. Then we have other approach, uh, for instance total reserve based indicators directly assess the extracted mass of a given resource usually in relation to its deposit. Is a, um, that is a, another point of view used uh, once again in uh, LCA, in Life Cycle Assessment, for method to define uh, depletion. Another interesting approach, very, in my opinion, uh, not so useful usually uh, uh, exergy loss. Uh, what is exergy? Maybe many people know that um, it has been described as the upper limit of the portion of a resource that can be converted into work. Uh, exergy extraction represents extracted potential for entropy production from the natural environment. Since a resource is usually concentrated following extraction, it means that the amount of energy necessary to bring the resource back into the state before extraction can be described as exergy loss. It's not so easy, it's another parameter, uh, not so useful. Uh, and usual for me, but I suggest it for you. Uh, surplus energy is another approach, uh, in my opinion, more interesting maybe, because the surplus energy approach uh, has adopted uh, once again in another kind of LCA method uh, as eco-indicator or impact 2002. It's based, uh, it's based on the assumption that as more of a resource is extracted over time, quality of deposits still available tends to decrease. And each extraction of a certain amount of resource from a deposit in the present will require a nearly move to more energy intensive extraction from lower quality, less accessible deposits in the future. So, uh, by now depletion we, um, we will have a surplus in, in energy in the future in order to extract the same quantity of the same resource. Finally another uh, economical approach, marginal cost. It may be argued that as energy demand increases, uh, if a resource is to be extracted from less concentrated, lower quality deposits over time, and so extraction costs increase as well. Mm? At the same way, in the future, we will have uh, uh, the need to extract uh, a resource but uh, uh, it will be uh, less concentrated, it will have a lower quality and so on. And so extraction cost will uh, increase. An economic perspective for measure measuring resource depletion as energy demand for extraction or concentration and monetizing the energy requirement of resource extraction provide a more universally applicable indicator that match once again together physic and uh, physic in, in this uh, case uh, as energy amount and cost. Uh, the last approach, uh, willingness to pay models, a very strange uh, approach because uh, uh, willingness to pay models aim to capture the costs of an environmental intervention that the stakeholders are willing to accept. For instance, if people uh, like 
makes uh, more a product than another, that the product is uh, better by an environmental point of view, by sustainable point of view. Uh, people uh, could be uh, have a good approach also with uh, a higher cost for that uh, project. So a market model is used for abiotic resource depletion, assumption differing depending on the substance or material, different group, uh, for instance, uh, in relation with uh, metal, minerals, fossil uh, uh, fuel, and so on. The cost of substituting a substance by a sustainable alternative is used by this uh, indicator for future generation affected by present-day depletion. In case of biotic resource or ecosystem capacity, including, including fish, meat, wood, and land use, a survey-based contingent valuation method is used to determine uh, willingness to pay model it has the value of a resource to stakeholders. Uh, for instance, some uh, uh, product, uh, in, in Italy we have a lot of biological product for food, and people uh, can pay uh, on a higher, or that biological product have a product, I'm sorry, have a, a higher cost. Yes, <laughs> but uh, people uh, willingness to pay <laughs> uh, for that uh, product. So um, I would like to say that uh, whatever the model of assessment and the index used, uh, the focus uh, should be moved toward the solution starting from the depletion evaluation reason. The question is, how is it possible now to match our needs to match our consumption and uh, natural resources depletion issues. Uh, natural resources depletion plus waste production, that means uh, environmental impact. But uh, if we change our mind and we think about resources valorization and waste minimization, thanks to recycling and recovery, and recovery that means uh, sustainability. Um, you can read uh, what uh, some colleague of mine from, from Holland, a Dutch uh, pro um, professor at uh, Delft University, uh, wrote that in Western Europe now, 15% of the raw material expressed in euros, so once again an economical point of view, used for building work and consumer products is obtained by recycling. This means that recycling has become a player in the raw material sector and in all natural resources issues. In the coming 15 years, the contribution of recycling in the supply of raw materials in Western Europe must be doubled to 30%. For this purpose, breakthrough technology must be developed and uh, it uh, has to be developed also our approach in uh, uh, waste recycling, waste treatment, uh, secondary resources, uh, secondary raw materials utilization. The time of expiration of non-renewable resources can be postponed, possible by, for, a long, for a very long time, by technological improvement in the exploitation and processing efficiency, using the resources in accord with a program of sustained availability, minimize the raw material consumption by the materialization of products, optimization of raw material recovery and use, utilization of substitute resources, and improve and maximize recycling processes. I would like just to finish one minute with a new approach that I like in this period, transition engineering. Uh, transition engineering is a movement in the world that was born six months ago. <laughs> Thanks to Susan Krumdick from New Zealand. 
and uh, is, uh, in my opinion, is a new approach after sustainability idea, after sustainability philosophy, uh, sustainable philosophy, uh, working on changing existing system to manage unsustainability was the only way to transition through the next 50 years or so with a prosperous outcome. Why transition? Transition from fossil fuel, transition from carbon period to the future with a, a, a lower level of consumption, a lower level of uh, energy consumption using uh, renewable resources. And uh, nature uh, has always been a challenge and in this period there is a, a very strong challenge in order to change also our mind in uh, natural resource uh, utilization and uh, of course, uh, waste production and uh, recycling and so on. Okay, I finish uh, um, underline that it uh, is necessary to engage participation at, tot, uh, at all levels, uh, active engagement and communication, strategic decision making in all topics, in all fields, in particular in natural resources utilization and uh, uh, waste uh, production and recycling. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alessandra, for also for your perfect timekeeping, 20 Thank seconds you. in hand. Um, so I'd like to ask the next speaker, that's uh, Giorgio Giacomelli. I'm not sure if I've actually pronounced your name properly. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Giorgio comes also from Università de Bologna, um, but from the Department of Physics. I didn't know what department. Engineering. So, Giorgio is going to talk to us about indicators and indices of energy consumption and saving. Sorry, I changed a couple of slides. Yeah, I always do as well. Um, the, what I'm going to talk is uh, sketched in here. After a brief introduction, I will uh, speak about uh, energy, and then I will add the new gas oil shales and oil sands, which brought a considerable change in the energy surprise. And uh, I think this will be so more in the future. Then uh, some con conclusions and perspectives. Uh, this is a small introduction. The Industrial Revolution started uh, two, uh, two centuries ago, and uh, originally it started with ships and trains with uh, essentially steam powered, and then the internal combustion engines, and then electrification. Uh, today we live uh, our life, uh, and uh, it's completely different from the life that we were living uh, two centuries ago. It's enough to enter in a kitchen or in a living room or somebody and find an incredible number of things which before did not exist. And then uh, we also go by cars, while before 
we needed the horses and uh, this has changed very much our life. In uh, the last year, in 2012, there was a technological revolution in the US and Canada, obtaining all the gas in commercial quantities from, from shales and the oil sands, vastly increasing the oil and gas reserves. And you, one should remember that two years, ten years before, this possibility was considered essentially impossible and too costly. But the development of new technologies made it possible. The normal oil and gas reserves show a tendency to increase instead of decreasing because uh, uh, of improved technologies which allow to obtain oil and gas from deeper sources in land and in the seas. And the addition of oil and gas from shales and oil sands increase considerably the reserves and allow them uh, to obtain, uh, and they are, can be obtained from different countries. The coal reserves remain large, but the increasing reserves of oil and gas will reduce its use in many nations. Hydroelectricity is increasing in developing nations, while in developed nations there's essentially nothing to do. That's it. Nuclear energy is increasing in Eastern, Eastern nations, while the situation is not clear in many Western nations. There is in particular China and South Korea increasing very much in nuclear energy. South Korea also makes nuclear energy for some uh, uh, Arab countries, and this will go on for some in the future. New, en new energies essentially are increasing, the new renewable energies are increasing, but their global contribution remains very small. In here, this is a review. So if you look to the right, you see the green part, which is used of oil, which is the dominant thing. Then if you go to the top, you see use of, of coal, which is very much used in, for instance, China and India. And they, they increase, the increase in their use is mainly due to these countries. And then you see the hydroelectricity, which keeps increasing because ancora of some possibilities which exist in the developing countries. Then the, there is uh, nuclear energy, which is slowly decreasing, but there is an increase again in, in Eastern nations. Then uh, the, the, you see a very little piece of new renewable energies. So this is a, a problem because one would need more of this, but I'm afraid that the use of the new oil and gas from uh, uh, the new materials will may have some problems for this. The new energy sources, in, essentially, which started to be commercially used in 2012, and in 2012 there was an increase of 40% of the local production of natural gas from oil shales and an increase of 29% of oil. These are very large increases. And this produced, first of all, a new El Dorado in the US, in Western Canada. And uh, in, the, in the US, about 600 million jobs are dedicated to this. But there also there are other jobs in the society connected with this. So one expects that at the end of this, uh, this year, about one million of new positions compared to three, three or four years ago. And this will have consequences also for, for Europe. The US also probably will become an exporter of natural gas because uh, there, is, there is also a considerable excess in energy saving and so they will decrease their gas oil imports and become an exporter of natural gas. I forgot to mention that Canada is the majority of oil shales, about 70% in the western province of Alberta. In here there is a sketch the way one obtains gas and oil from these deposits. And you see essentially in, in the right f f picture a, a well which is vertical, then it goes horizontal. 
and in the horizontal, essentially for two or three days, they put some uh, um, hot water plus uh, some sand, some sand, and uh, and this uh, means that high pressure, and essentially they fracture the uh, the rock from the essentially the small fractures come out very easily the gas more difficult but obtain also oil in some shales uh, to the left is a more complex st st situation where you see in the center one vertical well which eventually becomes horizontal and they fracture the, the, the region where the, there is the shale and then uh, on the side, left and right, from the center one, you have uh, wells which pump the, ma the, material, the material oil. In reality, it's heavy oil, so it's not easy to get it up, but uh, eventually they get it. And outside, there are uh, test stations to see the situation of water and to have a complete test of the water. The situation is not so simple as it seems, because now they also measure the uh, the, the isotope, comp isotopic composition of the material. And they found essentially that the OBSI carbon 12, there is a small fraction of carbon 12, 13. But this it turns out to be important because they know immediately individuate the regions where it's better to pump out the gas, for instance, and it goes up much faster. And the other regions, there is a gas with some carbon 13 which is very useful to make certain compounds. This is an oil sand in Alberta. It is open. Clearly, it's not uh, very... Essentially, you have to do something at the end. But essentially, the company which owns this and other things, they have to remake it eventually as it was at the beginning. Since the Canadians and the, 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 the people from the US are very serious people, I think one can de decide that they will do it. They will make it into some parks. But it will be more difficult to do something similar in Europe. Now, in here, there are the largest deposits of these materials. If you look at the top, you will see the mainly, this is for oil shales, shales which will give out oil. You see they are mainly in the United States. Actually, they are the, more, the region where they are placed most of them. But the gas at this moment is what they obtain. They don't have as much gas, as much oil. And then if you go down, eventually you find Sicily, which has a considerable, com a considerable amount of uh, uh, red flag, a uh, considerable material where they could extract uh, uh, oil. And then also some more in Italy, some material, some other material. So Italy has some material. For this moment, nobody speaks about this possibility. In this map, there is, for instance, where the majority of oil, oil sands, it is in Canada, Western Canada, or of uh, oil shales, and then you see the blue, the blue thing, the biggest is in the United States. But you see also that they are scattered all over the world, which and it changes the situation of the reserves. They have nations which have much of this. If they use it, they clearly compete with the Arab nations who had, until this moment, own most of the oil and of the, of the gas and of the other things. Gas oil shales in the world and in Europe. China, Australia and India have great interest in shales. And they also have a large amount of this. In Poland, there will be, in, in a couple of months, a conference on shale gas world Europe. And Poland and Estonia and other Eastern European nations are planning Europe to become independent from energy imports from Russia. Poland is rich in gas or gas shales, but at a depth one kilometer deeper than in the United States. And, but already has some test wells producing gas. And so this is what they want to do for the, for the future. Russia and Estonia have any very large oil shale reserves, but also Italy. If you go to the bottom graph, you see that uh, 
Uh, thank you. As you see, the, the Russia is the very, clearly has a very large territory, very much of oil shales. But then there is Italy, which is non, non negligible, the quantity we have. It is, they are in the Tripolitic oil shale basin, and most of them is concentrated around in Sicily and around Sicily. Then the other one is, uh, this is particularly Estonia, which is a very small nation, with enough reserves if they use it for one, more than 150 years. Energy saving. Energy saving, if it's done properly, can be considered for a while as a new source of energy. The list of methods by which you obtain energy savings is very long, and very much progress was made. Low consumption lamps is the first example. Most domestic appliances are new and they save more energy compared to the older domestic appliances. The insulation in the buildings is much better and in buildings which are not so young you need our certification which certainly will improve. Then a generalized teleheating of buildings would mean if for instance you use a plant to make electricity which has an efficiency of 40 percent and if you do teleheating for many places, you have another 40%. So the efficiency becomes globally 80%. This is not done completely everywhere. So it's done only in few places. But this, this is one of the future things to improve. There is a considerable energy saving with the airplanes. New airplanes compared to all the airplanes are 50% more efficient. So this is a great saving from nations where there are lots of flights, like the United States and also Europe. Then there are lighter materials for everything, cars, trucks, and uh, airplanes, and also better aerodynamics, also for, t for cars, etc. And this means a considerable improvement in energy efficiency. The new hybrid vehicles, and new lighter materials, new metal alloys, carbon fibers, and new steel, which all, only part of them have been developed, but they will improve considerable increase in, in efficiency. Then uh, the, the electricity until this moment has been transported by wires. But in many places, inside computers, everywhere, you do via electronics. And this is more efficient and you lose as energy. If you are capable of doing more of this, you will have an extra saving. Then there is a mother-in-law. For instance, I keep all my, I turn on lights and I keep them on. But when my mother-in-law was in my house, I noticed that she was the, closing all the lights. So this looked very funny at the beginning, but at the end she was, uh, it was uh, really important. Now I don't need my, my mother-in-law, now there is my wife who does the same. Uh, as near I start uh, European statistics, and surprisingly enough, I started with crimes. We have the impression, by reading papers, looking at the news, that the crime is improving, increasing every year. This is the UMISI rate per 100,000 people, of popula 100, people of population. But if you look in all the states, uh, in Europe, and Italy is a crime where there is uh, the, error, the error, you see that the yellow thick was in years essentially um, 206, 207, 205, 207. And while the black are years after until 210. So there is a decrease. There is a general decrease of crimes all over Europe. And this is contrary to what you would have thought. It's because uh, the journal consider all the papers, all the, all the TV, etc., consider good news when you have a crime. If a real good news is not, is not valuable, is not uh, given. And so this is a problem. Uh, the second one is unemployment in the European Union. And then in the top one is essentially uh, glo global per nation in Europe. In Italy is where, the, where is the green, green arrow. And uh, you see, thank you, and uh, you see that uh, the, the ladies, not the, uh, the ladies who are 
the black uh, column are more unemployed than the, the men. This is one thing which was well known. In the bottom figure, it instead depends on education. And you see the yellow one top are those who have a poor education. Then you have the green, those which have secondary education, high schools. And then you have a very small tick, which you see barely, which is those which are university education. And you see that it decreases with increasing education. So this is a way, again, to improve, to improve, to reduce the unemployment with higher education. These this are the one at the left is estimates of future, future energy consumption. So you see the remain, oil remains dominant, the natural gas goes above coal, and the renewables remain small, but they are increasing, and the nuclear uh, remain probably at the same level as now. But uh, this, this, this probably they not, do not contain any information for the new revolution from shales and sands. And so probably they will change. Is a, even this, uh, if it is for only 25 years, is a, it, is a, it, will, it will be probably soon changed because of the new dis discoveries. On the right, there is energy intensity and, uh, and uh, versus the, um, the energy efficiency. And if you look, the energy efficiency is highest in very poor nations, Bangladesh. Two minutes, okay. I, mm. uh, then if you remain at the top, where there is even G7, Italy, you notice that uh, essentially is the, is the highest eff efficiency in energy compared to other nations. Simply because our energy costs too much, and so all the, all the factories have uh, to go, try to go to small uses of energy. This is uh, the same thing which I've shown. But in, uh, so electricity prices for domestic industrial consumer. The top is for domestic consumers. The bottom is for industrial consumers. If you look at Italy, where there are the green arrows, you will see, for instance, for industrial consumers, you have a certain price, which is the price. And then you have a sort of, sort of strange taxes. Some taxes, and then they, they increase the cost of electricity. And this is a disaster, because uh, essentially it causes difficulties to, to any industry which uses lots of electricity. Uh, the, the, in here, I will skip it, simply stating that unfortunately, in Italy, it seems to be very difficult to do any sort of uh, activity. In particular, if you want to find oil in the sea or gas in the seas, all the regions no, don't want it, etc. You have a fast tra trains, they don't want also that. And the conclusion is that the world energy consumption keeps increasing. The main energy sources are still fossil fuels. Their resources keep increasing because of, because of technological innovations and the commercialization of the new, uh, of the new oil and gas from shales. I think that probably every nation has to use all the local energy sources. If we don't use it sooner or later, you have a problem, and more problems. Uh, the, the major interest clearly in on renewable energies is, will be because they reduce CO2 emissions. But uh, they will have a hard life, I think, in the, in the immediate future because of the new sources of, of fuel which, uh, which have appeared. Uh, since Italy has a great problem from a very large financial debt, we have to use all these sources. But probably, probably we, will, we can be optimistic. They will find some solution of an incredible time of discussions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, very interesting talk about energy and it's interesting to see that uh, so much effort is going on still into extracting uh, fossil fuels. So our next speaker
Thank you. So we have uh, also from Università de Bologna, we have Marco Sumini, and Marco will speak to us about decarburization of energy sources, indicators and indices. I think it's in, if you close this one, this is this. Thank you, Alice. Th I would like to thank also Luigi Bruzzi for his kind invitation of, to this uh, conference, also for this year. And uh, my talk uh, is a, a sort of continuation of the preceding talk of the, uh, by Giorgio Giacomelli. Because uh, when uh, I, we talk about uh, this conference uh, with Luigi, he gave to me a, a subject, uh, energy sources decarbonization and sustainability. But unfortunately, the world uh, is not going uh, toward decarbonization and is going toward sustainability very, very, very slow. Perhaps I forgot the slow, a very, because uh, 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 for many, many reasons. So I added the subtitle to my presentation energy and environment, trend and issue. The reason is are, are as follows. In the last year, we had some uh, relevant events that changed the energy market. The first uh, has been uh, the end of the so-called nuclear renaissance. The new standby of the nuclear energy after the Fukushima crisis then the undermine the stop the energy, any perspective from the coming decades, I think. Even if uh, we can count uh, some uh, 434 reactor in operation, as uh, the agency, or International Agency of Atomic Energy says, and some new grid connection in China this year, and 69 nuclear power plants in construction, the public acceptance and economic compliance with the energy market are still a very big issue. In the US, for example, the US has more than 100 nuclear power plants in operation. The concern on the federal budget with the related cuts to subsidies to nuclear and renewable too, and the cost of the upgrades required after Fukushima, valves, piping, pumps, uh, and so on, are forcing many utilities to consider an anticipated outage for many aging uh, or not easy to refit nuclear power plant. Moreover, the economic disaster of the first PR nuclear power plant of Okilwoto in Finland is now looking into the Russian uh, style, PWR, the VVR, created some additional panic. For someone, uh, this is a good news. These are, are good news because uh, the, uh, many people have uh, several issues against uh, nuclear energy. But this means simply they are going to burn something. We, uh, this is a statistics uh, displayed by uh, the International Agency of Atomic Energy. Uh, just one comment. I would like to add some comment about the, the agency. The agency always says that they doesn't have uh, enough money to support uh, their institutional activities uh, like uh, safety and security of the nuclear power plant all around the world. But we learned this morning that the agency has started now some new activities about sustainability and nuclear technology application to study ocean life. So the problem is uh, they have a mission, a, a very important mission related to safety and security in the nuclear field. So they are simply doing marketing uh, communication or something real. It's not, uh, not so much uh, clear all that. The second, uh, the second point, a strong development, as Giacomelli 
said the shale gas search and extraction in central and northwest part of US that is rapidly changing also many political strategy allowing for instance the US to look differently with respect to the past to the Arab oil based powers and put the sever the market as energy exporter but there is a, a strong bottleneck with respect to shale gas and oil sands up to now they are transferred from Alberta and the west part of US to the Gulf of Mexico where the US have their refineries uh, uh, simply by truck so there is a big a really big project what the project is called Keystone Excel pipeline that should link Alaska Alberta the west part of the US up to the Gulf of Mexico but uh, there is a strong uh, opposition and uh, we are to some environmental issue about uh, this uh, pipeline and uh, the EPA is still uh, looking uh, quite uh, severely to the uh, whole project so if the perspective is uh, to continue to transfer oil and shale gas by truck uh, this will uh, take more and more years uh, to develop, uh, fully develop this, uh, this uh, energy resource. In spite of this, uh, gas undoubtedly looks as the main energy source for the coming decades. And uh, we, we are not talking about pipeline on, only in the US, also in Europe, also in uh, near uh, Asia. Or we are trying to build a new pipeline and new links to develop the gas transportation. So the gas will probably, probably will be the main energy source, the primary energy source for the coming decades. Still fossil fuel. Okay? Taking into account also that also in US, in uh, uh, Europe, uh, we are looking for some uh, shale gas uh, opportunities. Uh, well, is the coming decades will be based essentially on fossil fuel. All costs, however, are rising in a fast pace, mainly for environmental reasons, both for new oil gas sources. The Alberta administration is going to put quite high standard requirement about the carbon content of the oil, but we have seen the picture a few minutes ago. The, 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 the environment is not so happy about the the the, 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 the oh, okay. The, the friend called that oil sense. The environmentalists call that tar sense. It's a, different, it's a different perception of the same uh, energy vector. The very long term exploitable resources like the Arctic one, it, it, just uh, in this day we are reading a newspaper uh, about Greenpeace that is, uh, is trying to interfere with Russian activities in, on the Arctic. But uh, really, the, all the, 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 the exploitation of these resources is really investment demanding. And also there is, is not a science fiction, the potential interest for methane hydrate, ice. They are studying that. Always for fossil fuel. So we are again facing the perspective of at least one or two decades, at least, with the energy production still based mainly on fossil fuel. More coal, less oil, more and more gas. The nuclear phase out of Germany and the delay with nuclear start in Japan up to now are simply increasing the fossil fuel burning. In this context, carbon capture technology has found its own path to develop, but all the proposed ideas look expensive, focused on big plants, and with potential relevant and dramatic environmental impact in case of failure. Accidental release of the uh, of a carbon capture plant uh, could be very, really devastating. I would like to show you some, uh, just a few pictures about uh, the energy panorama at, at, uh, at the global level, CO2 emission, 2011. The main responsible of, of uh, the, this situation is China. Europe uh, is becoming uh, 
a garden like in Renaissance Villa. It's okay. But we are, have simply moved all energy intensive production to some, somewhere else. But the world we know is not infinite. It's a, it's a small ball. <laughs> so we have moved from the, the energy intensive production from Europe to China, to Southeast. South but Southeast needed to burn fossil fuel uh, to, to make the same, the same production. China uh, is, is, is planning uh, to avoid uh, an excess, uh, in, in, a pressure in excess to the fossil market to develop uh, hydro. Develop hydro at the level uh, that uh, has never been seen. Something about more than uh, 230 gigawatt in hydropower. Simply the, 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 the dam of the three, uh, three gorges is able to produce 23 gigawatt of electric power. So they are, uh, environmentalists are quite at, uh, worried about this kind of, 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 uh, of um, or growing the, or this kind of development of hydropower in China because this means that they are, try, are, are planning to change everything about uh, river uh, territories and, and so on. But this is unavoidable if we have to reduce the pressure on fossil sources. And this is, a, this is a energy production uh, uh, distribution all around the world. Europe, okay, is, uh, as I said, it's becoming a, a little garden. But every, uh, in other places in the world, we have to produce. We have to produce uh, tools, we have to produce energy, we have to use energy. And, uh, okay, there is some place, uh, there, there are some places where... Uh, Energy, uh, energy consumption could be better. Okay, we can study something uh, uh, about that. But, uh, but uh, the, the problem is that where you need to produce something, you need some relevant uh, 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 sources in terms of electricity. And the main resources actually are a small portion of nuclear, a, a big portion of coal, and a big portion of, of, uh, of gas, with uh, oil should uh, lower a little his, his percentage. Another main point, uh, another main point uh, is, uh, in my point of view, that uh, there is, uh, we have, uh, every one of us uh, has seen uh, uh, that uh, the, uh, we, uh, GDP is not a real indicator, we know. We have seen Brazil, we have seen uh, uh, Turkish people, we have seen uh, some uh, crisis in China, we, but the media tend to don't talk uh, about China because uh, they fear some kind of, uh, of retortion. So, uh, but uh, the real situation is that uh, the economic standby touch also the so-called BRICS, that but the BRICS also discovered in the last couple of years that economic growth cannot be the couple for the social one. People is working, but is working hard, but it would like also to have something in return in terms of democracy, in terms of social social benefits. They don't have. They simply are making the, the, the GDP growing, but they have nothing in change. Finally. And many OECD country, we always see, we always uh, uh, there is a, a, a strong diffusion of a deep consciousness of the environmental issue arisen by the exploitation of energy sources. Every kind, every kind, not only fossil, also renewable or not. It's not only about nuclear. We can talk about a PV, a PV field or. Uh, a field for, for, for wine, a wine farm, so it doesn't matter. Wine farm or PV field have this issue and the, the people is not so, 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 so easy toward this kind of plants. 
The needs, there is, a, in my opinion, the need of a new attitude with respect to the carbon emission, carbon heating, anthropogenic driving climate change, and, and also that threatens the planet, and also about uh, all the constraints that we are putting on the environment by anthropic actions. I mean, uh, 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 when 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 uh, we when we put something uh, on, on an environment, uh, even uh, an hotel, uh, even uh, a, 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 each kind of, of installation, not only to to produce something, but simply to 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 perform some economical activity, we put some constraint on the on the territory, some constraint on the environment. Uh, and we, we, we need to avoid that uh, the environment could change. But the environment naturally changes. We can take a picture and pretend that for centuries we could see the same picture. The environment is not so. The we can uh, look at the environment with something that can change, evolve, uh, become something different. Uh, the river has always changed their, their way to the sea. The coast uh, are always changed uh, along uh, the, 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 the centuries. We cannot avoid, but we, if you, we have an establishment that look at the sea, a, a, um, an hotel, we, we would like to, to save because of, uh, this is an economical, economical um, uh, event uh, that uh, is, is something changed. But I cannot accept all that. We, we need to accept that the environment could change. Not too much constraint. Not too much constraint. And this becomes a big issue. Becomes a big issue because everything has been transformed in uh, an economical parameter. What is, is deciding our future in terms of, of energy sources are not the scientists. Uh, as not uh, no more the governments, because the governments have no more the money to decide, the money to support the choices. Not the Italy, obviously, we are a small country, but not even the US that are cutting uh, all such kind of subsidies to, to all the energy uh, energy activities. What is deciding uh, deciding that the future of the energy are simply Market consideration sim is simply the money. In the, my, uh, to connected, okay, the, to my presentation are some evaluation of uh, Wall Street firms about uh, the, what, uh, how the various energy sources uh, are um, uh, able to return the investment in how many years and so on. They are the people that is deciding our future in terms of uh, of uh, energy, not the scientists, uh, not the governments. And I think that it's uh, uh, quite a big problem to let the money decide uh, for a problem like uh, energy and environment, uh, yeah, because the money has a return type uh, that is evaluated in terms of a year, or five years, but energy, energy issue uh, must be studied and evaluated for 30 years, for half a century or more. What is stepping out uh, uh, now is uh, an, uh, the idea of a smart solution, for instance, for global network, uh, for production, distribution of the energy. Uh, uh, when you need it, uh, become I mean, ab able to overcome uh, the paradigm of you can produce it about electricity, but you cannot store it. It's very difficult. This philosophy is receiving quite a strong support by economic analysis. Remove some considerations, some facts that are also relevant and worth to mention in a current picture energy problem. I mean, the return of a strategic idea of an autonomous, sustainable energy policy at country level. We are talking about uh, Europe, we are talking about uh, US, uh, but uh, the, re the real point is that each country should be able to allow a, a sustainable energy source for its own needs, independently for what uh, is uh, going on or around. 
And this goes in opposite direction with the more appealing more uh, smart concept. The need of plants, for instance, for energy-based load production. And this must be or hydro or nuclear or coal because gas is too expensive that cannot rely on renewable potential. I conclude, so we, we respect the time, with a small spot. We need uh, to make, uh, uh, to generate a consensus. And uh, I just, uh, uh, at the end of my presentation, I spend two words about, uh, in a, a sort of advertising. This is a cucumber, uh, is a, a social environmental network that has been designed by one of my, my oldest students. And the idea is that is to build something like Facebook or, uh, or Twitter where people can, you could use uh, environmental tools, could uh, put in the network environmental issue, could uh, allow people also participate in design and build up consensus about energy and environmental problem. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the speakers. Now, we've had a slight change in the program, apart from the fact we're terribly late. But Luigi has asked if we could have the presentation of the book next. And uh, afterwards, he's asked me, since Maria Betti has had to leave, uh, to just say a few words to wrap up the session, which, uh, if there's anyone still in the room, I will do. Thank you. So one year ago, we were presenting in this room the Spanish version of the book. The book, uh, is, the title is uh, uh, La gestione eh, sostenibile dell'ambiente. De, dell uh, so we, we faced one year ago a big problem. We wanted to translate uh, the book uh, into Italian but uh, we, we had no, no solution in front of us. And we were very happy about the possibility to make of this problem a reference for a doctor thesis. Doctor, yes, for the second, uh, what we call uh, laurea magistrale, yes. And so finally we had the opportunity and also the look, I would say, to find a very, a very nice girl, yes, uh, uh, giving uh, the availability to do this. Uh, and so I, I would invite uh, Noemi to just say a couple of words about the work done in translation. And after that, uh, we will have also the speech of Paola Rubi, which is, this is the last but not the least. It is already... already uh, I do say, an usual uh, way to, to close our works in, in, this, in this room. Okay, please. About ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Less, no. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. I'm Ilaria Noemi De Carlo, translator, intercultural mediator, but also student at the Advanced School of Modern Languages for Interpreters and Translators of the University of Bologna at Forlì. I'm here today not to speak about a technical issue. I'm not a technician. I'm a linguist. But I'm here today to speak, to speak to you about my experience in translating the essay La gestione sostenibile dell'ambiente, principi, contesti e metodi, 
made working on my technical translation thesis in collaboration with uh, Professor Luigi Bruzzi and Professor Francisco Serrano. Specifically, I'll tell you all what what challenges uh, have to be faced during the translation of such a scientific and technical text which combines the characteristics of a technical text with those of essays. Indeed, this book is uh, made of many chapters uh, written by different authors and which deal with uh, different themes about the environmental sustainability. So, for... Yeah, yeah. So for a translator who is not an expert of the field, it is very important to firstly read up and create a documentation about the treaty subject because, uh, of course, we are not experts of this field. So it has been very useful for me to um, read available Italian literature on the subject. Just for instance, I read Prevenzione e Controllo dell'Impatto Ambientale, written by Luigi Bruzzi, and some books of the book series Energia Sostenibile, Risorse, Occupazione e Stili di Vita, by Luigi Bruzzi and Simona Verità. So in order to uh, write and to translate a very technical text, it is very useful to create a documentation in order to produce a target text which does not appear to be a translation, does not appear to be artificial, affected when read by an Italian expert of the field. And quoting one of the greatest translation theorists, Christiane Nord, we can divide translation problems into four categories. Textual problems which, are, which deal with uh, specific characteristics of the source text, such as word plays. Uh, pragmatic problems which, are, uh, which refer to um, pragmat pragmatic issues such as target readers and how they affect the translation. Cultural problems which refer to the differences, the many differences between the source and the target culture and linguistic problems which refer to um, language structure and its characteristics. And in translating this book, I um, found challenges uh, and problems um, belonging to all these four categories because when dealing with two different languages, uh, there are many differences that have to be solved, that have to be faced, and which the translation process highlights. You could think that Spanish and Italian are very close and similar languages, but it is not so. Indeed, when translating this book, I realized that there are many differences between these two languages. Even, um, and above all, if we take into account the fact that um, authors use a very technical language and that um, technical and scientific Italian uses uh, English calcs, English expressions and loan words, which uh, distinguish this language from Spanish, which on the other hand is a language that does not love English so much and does not use English so much. But there is another item uh, that is very important to highlight, and this is the fact that, that of cultural specific elements, that is in our case, culture and specific references to the Spanish local situation because of course this book has been written in Spanish so there are many uh, specific references to the Spanish legislation and the local situation and in translating, um, in translating these references into Italian we have to adapt these references to the Italian reader because in translation it is very important to consider and to take into account the potential Italian reader. And another element, another important element, is the fact that this book is a technical and a scientific text, but it is also an essay. So uh, it is characterized by irregular writing, which sometimes is not so flowing, and which often uses uh, expressions and elements of common language. So this um, balance between common and technical uh, language has made the translation harder, of course. But... However, I have to highlight that one of the greatest difficulties and challenges uh, for me in translating this book has been that of technical terminology, which is one of the greatest difficulties for translators who are, of course, not experts of the field. And in, indeed, this book is made of some chapters which are easier because they use common language, whereas there are other chapters which are more technical and scientific. But the old book is characterized and 
Professor Luigi Bruzzi knows, the, knows this, uh, the old book is characterized by a very technical terminology. And in solving, in facing these problems, documentation has been very important for me. But I have to say that the collaboration with the expert, whose role is commended by all translation theorists, has been very important for me. And in particular, I collaborated with Professor Francesco Serrano and Professor Luigi Bruzzi. Francesco Serrano was very important for me because he's a Spanish native speaker and, of course, he's an expert of this, uh, of this domain. So he could help me with comprehension problems, which are, one of the, which are very common in translation. Just to give you an example, I had to translate El Significante Tractor, which is a, a, a technical term, a technical expression, but used in the book prologue, which, has, which is characterized by a very uh, literary and complex style, which is completely different from the old book. And so I had difficulties in understanding the contextual meaning of this term, but thanks to the expert, I could solve this problem. Another uh, problem was the translation of this uh, expression, disciplina scientifica positivista, reductore quantificada. Uh, in this expression, I had difficulties in understanding the contextual meaning of quantificada. But again, thanks to the expert, we, we can solve these problems together. However, I have to highlight that um, equally or perhaps it has been equally or perhaps more important the collaboration with Professor Luigi Bruzzi uh, because he's an Italian expert of the field so he could help me with the Italian text, the target text. Uh, indeed, Spanish language laws are different from Italian ones, so we, had to, uh, we often had to adapt uh, the text according to the potential Italian reader that is fundamental and crucial in translation. Now I'd like to um, end this speech by highlighting again the importance of acquiring a technical language and a scientific knowledge when translating because in order to uh, create um, a text which does not appear to be a translation and in, doing, in acquiring this scientific knowledge uh, it has been very important for me to create an Italian glossary uh, starting from the Spanish one. Indeed, at the end of the Spanish book, there is a glossary of technical terms, uh, and we decided not to literally translate this Spanish, uh, this Spanish glossary, but to create an Italian glossary of, uh, made of Italian equivalents of the technical words. So I proceeded by comparing Italian glossaries, which can be found online, and then I created my own Italian glossary. And for this phase of the work, the glossary of Arpa Veneto, which can be found online, has been very useful for me. Then I'd like to highlight uh, and underline the great educa educational usefulness of this translation work because um, it could um, help me uh, face a very technical and scientific text which combines the characteristics of the essay's translation, but also the characteristics of the technical translation, which are very different genres. So they are very, um, it has been very useful for me. And this work, this translation work, helped me um, facing acquiring uh, scientific knowledge of the field, but also opened me the door to the professional world I like and I'm going to enter. And I leave you with one of the greatest um, quotations about the, the importance of the word and language, which is taken from uh, a novel of Laura Esquivel, just to give you an example, or an idea of what translation word is. La palabra era un guerrero, un, querre, un guerrero sagrado, un caballero águila o un simple mercenario. En caso de tener un carácter divino, la palabra convertía el espacio vacío de la boca en el centro de la creación. Just to... Uh, let you introduce in my word and my translation word and this is the symbol of la malinche which is the symbol of the interpreter and the translator thank you all for the attention okay. thank you very much noemi it's uh, always a challenge to do technical translations <laughs> yeah. But you had good guidance, I think, with Francisco and Luigi. Um, I believe uh, 
Paolo Rubi is supposed to speak? Paolo pa pa Rubi, yes. yes. He's a journalist. Yes. But a uh, couple of words. Yes. I ask uh, Noemi to yeah, stay yeah. with us yeah. and to help us in translation from, it, uh, from uh, Italian into English. Mm. Okay? I try to. Uh, let me introduce Paola Rubi. Mm. Paola Rubi is a very famous uh, person in Bologna. Every, everybody knows uh, because she was for many years a journalist before and was also uh, active uh, eight, 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 in Telerai, especially for uh, Emilia Romagna. So people, they have my age, they, everybody they know uh, Paola. Yeah. She will speak in Italian, but uh, she will be translated by Noemi. You have seen that uh, More or she less. has no problem in translating. Mm. Okay. I don't know what she's going to say. I want to highlight <laughs> this, <Okay>. this element. <laughs> Allora, buonasera a tutti intanto. E ogni anno da tre anni io vengo inserita in questa giornata in maniera un po' buffa. Del resto è la mia caratteristica, poche cose prendo sul intanto, serio. Intanto ti fermi. Uh -huh. Ecco, la gioia dell'italiano. Non si può fermarsi, è una tristezza, toglie, toglie completamente la spontaneità al discorso, che finché è scientifico va bene, perché tanto è scientifico per tutti. Quando invece è così da mass media, quando è invece un parlare familiare, fermarsi interrompe la logica, interrompe anche la spontaneità. Ok, good. Uh -huh. Good evening to everybody. Uh, since three years, I've been invited here to speak and to stay with you and uh, to speak about, uh, speak about strange things and odd things because I'm, I'm so. Uh, Italian has a problem. Uh, it's very difficult to stop it because uh, if we are dealing with scientific Italian, it's okay. But if we are, we are dealing with mass media and informal language, uh, stopping it is, very, is, a, is a pity because it's not so flowing. Esatto. <laughs> no, no, perché tutto sommato la capisco, eh, non si può attaccare questo, non lo so. Eh, la capisco, però io amo talmente tanto la mia lingua, ho talmente radicata la mia formazione umanistica e legale che per me tutto quello che è scientifico e che è di una lingua diversa è qualcosa che io rispetto ma difficilmente amo. It's very difficult for me. I can understand her, but it's very difficult for me to speak English, to speak another language because I love my language. I love Italian and I love all my humanities and humanity and humanitarian tradition that it's very difficult for me to love something that is scientific and that has another language. Allora perché io sono qui da tre anni? Per rappresentare da una parte l'informazione cosiddetti mass mediologi e i tuttologi, quelli che vengono qui a sentire un convegno come questo, ai loro, e in 40 righe, 30 righe, o come me che ero in Rai, 20 righe, anche meno, devono riassumerlo. E questo vuol dire cercare di captare l'essenza di molte ore di discussione o di discorso e cercare di trasmetterlo a chi qui non era e che tutto sommato è destinatario di quello che è stato detto. So why I'm here today and I'm here since three years I'm here to present uh, information and mass media. Uh, I'm, here to, I'm here to speak about um, scientists and um, people who have to um, summarize in 20 lines or in 10 minutes uh, hours and hours of uh, discussions and uh, debates uh, for people who were not here, who were not with them when discussing. 
e l'altro ruolo che svolgo qui è quello di rappresentare l'opinione e l'impatto che queste notizie, queste informazioni, queste, questi volumi hanno sull'uomo della strada, essendo una donna vorrei dire sulla donna della strada ma non è carino, quindi è meglio dire sull'uomo della strada e si pone l'uomo della strada un mucchio di domande proprio su questi argomenti attuali e, e, e terribili in certo qual modo e qui purtroppo io ho trovato una risposta insomma vediamo I'm here today also to in order to represent uh, the opinion of um, current and common people uh, who are people who walk on the street uh, um, street men I'd like to, I'm a, a woman so I'd like to say uh, street women but it's not so kind uh, so I'd like I have to say street men and um, I'm going to um, represent and present to you uh, the, the many questions that uh, common people um, ask about this current issues, these very current issues. Se c'è stato un momento in cui mi sono convinta che questo libro, libro è veramente indispensabile, è stata la giornata odierna, perché tutti i relatori per una persona inesperta, quale io sono dell'argomento, hanno parlato del loro tema in maniera bellissima, profonda e ampia come gamma, però secondo me poco, è vero che non, non è che conosca l'inglese in maniera così perfetta come Noemi, anzi, però in maniera puntuale ma settoriale, ecco perché trovo che un libro che come questo, dopo vi dirò come è diviso, tratta l'argomento della difesa, la gestione sostenibile dell'ambiente in maniera eh, dalla molteplicità di, multidisciplinare diciamo, quindi completa è un giro completo di opinione e sotto tante articolazioni secondo me è indispensabile in un momento in cui ci si rivolge da una parte a chi governa, a chi fa le leggi, ai politici e dall'altra alla gente che dovrebbe venire educata in maniera diversa a capire come si deve gestire, ed è indispensabile, gestire diversamente il proprio ambiente. Uh, the moment I convinced myself that uh, this book is really crucial, uh, really crucial and is very important has been today because I listened to all, all of you and I understood that with my English I understood that everybody spoke about uh, his um, sector uh, in depth and of course he spoke very well but um, everybody spoke on a specific, uh, spoke about a specific sector, a specific theme of uh, environmental um, domain. And uh, whereas uh, this book is very crucial in this moment because he uh, is not specific, he's not too much specific. He speaks about uh, inter the interdisciplinarities of environment and environmental uh, issues. So uh, it is crucial in this moment because we have to speak to uh, both politicians and common people, common people that we have to educate to manage all environmental issues. Esattamente. Esattamente. Brava, bene, hai detto giusto. Bravissima. Ed è proprio così, e cioè... Io penso che proprio materie così specifiche, così profonde perché ampie, ma così mirate, abbiano bisogno di essere, come si dice, spezzare il pane della scienza, spezzare queste cognizioni in modo che arrivino alle persone, perché tutto quello che è stato detto del, sulle coste, sul, sul mare, eh, sul verde di New York, eccetera, è lì. Poi 
voglio dire è quello che abbiamo detto del verde di New York vogliamo rapportarlo al verde di Milano di Napoli oppure di Marrakesh perché siamo globali e allora dobbiamo globalizzare anche culturalmente questo concetto ecco perché io dico non possiamo fermarci alla gioia di fare una cosa scientifica dobbiamo spezzare la conoscenza in maniera semplice ma chiara e convincente soprattutto di queste cognizioni so we have to um, divide these broad and specific themes uh, which are very broad but we have to divide these themes in order to arrive and to uh, let common people arrive to these themes because you spoke about coastal coasts or um, green New York but New York is there and we have to uh, let the green item the green issue uh, arrive to Milan or to common people uh, who uh, can understand uh, issues like the environmental domain we have to divide this uh, broad domain Perfetto, continua a dare il 9 più nella, nella traduzione perché rispecchia pienamente il mio pensiero. Ecco mh, perché per esempio sono sempre molto affascinata da, dalle conversazioni con uh, Luigi Bruzzi perché mi vengono date delle informazioni che nella mia ribadisco ignoranza del settore ma anche di, eh, come posso dire, intermediaria, come dicevo prima, fra quello che sarebbe da conoscere e quello che sarebbe da attuare bisogna sempre pensare che bisogna mediarlo ecco perché l'idea di presentare in questo libro la materia prima i principi ed è fondamentale in seconda parte, nella seconda parte i vari moduli cioè è chiaro che un discorso di salvezza e di come si dice sostenibilità se, se è riferita al mondo come si dice, costiero, al mondo rurale, a, a, ai vari settori, ai vari spezzati della realtà del mondo, eh, va considerato in maniera fondamentalmente uguale come principio, ma enormemente diversa come metodi e come strumenti, e questo è molto importante. So I am always fascinated by the debate uh, with Luigi Bruzzi because I am ignorant of this domain, but I consider myself a mediator uh, between knowing this domain but implementing our knowledge, our acknowledgement, and uh, this is uh, the, the key of this book, which is composed of two different parts. The first part is, uh, speaks about principles, then the second part uh, deals with different modules, different sectors of sustainability. Uh, different, the, these different sectors um, represent the different uh, mm, the coastal or sea uh, sectors of the world and of sustainability, uh, which, are, um, which have a common principle, the same principle, but very, very different methods. So we have to focus on this difference. E sempre tenendo presente, come qui è tenuto presente, anzi fa da base a tutto il discorso, quei tre principi che attualmente segnano la stra le strade da seguire nella possibilità di delineare un modo di gestione sostenibile dell'ambiente, cioè l'ambiente stesso, l'economia e la società. Sono tre elementi che vanno considerati contemporaneamente ma in maniera differenziata a secondo dei posti, dei luoghi. E penso io nella mia, ripeto, ignoranza profonda che ci vorrebbero non delle commissioni che in Italia ne abbiamo anche per decidere che ora è eh, adesso l'orologio, ma dei gruppi interdisciplinari che possano appunto eh, guardare a questa realtà indispensabile 
per il futuro e questo del glossario per esempio io lo manderei in tutte le scuole il glossario che avete fatto dovrebbe essere distribuito nelle scuole con un minimo di eh, spiegazione iniziale sulle tre parti in cui è diviso l'opera perché se non si comincia ragazzi dalla scuola è difficile poi arrivare a delle generazioni che considerino chiaramente che l'acqua finisce che altri beni naturali finiscono, dice il sole, no, eh, è d'accordo, Co come concetto è molto semplice, molto immediato, certo il sole se non scoppia sta là, però eh, bisogna poi applicarlo nella realtà, cioè far capire come e perché, e questo libro secondo me aiuta moltissimo. We have to take into account the three crucial principles that uh, are um, crucial today and these are the three principles which help us managing world in a sustainable way and these are society, environmental and economics. These two, uh, three principles um, are um, afford, face, uh, world and environment uh, in different places and are crucial uh, for creating uh, in Italy, we, in Italy we should create interdisciplinary groups uh, for the different places and the different situations uh, about this theme, about, about this domain. And the glossary that you have created is uh, really, really crucial, it, really important, and it should be uh, proposed to all schools because if we don't start from schools and from students, it's very difficult to make, make new generations understand uh, what environmental limits are and what uh, environmental problems are. Esatto. Esattamente, continua a essere molto soddisfatta della traduzione. Ecco, c'è per esempio un esempio che io faccio su me stessa. Quando è stata introdotta la divisione, la separazione dei rifiuti, cioè eh, la, le cose...